week we are going on a very rainy hike to a mountain side Neolithic axe factory. Join me! But first, before we get to the axe factory, we're going to have a look at my first disastrous attempt to produce a video this week. In fact, this week's upload is as much about how tough it is being a YouTuber. I don't earn any money out of this stuff, so I've got a full-time job. I have to fit the filming into my days off, and in the winter, that very often coincides with what we're looking at here. Terrible weather. So, the somewhat some might argue over ambitious idea that I had here was that I was going to climb a little known scrambling route in the Lake District called the Poor Man's Fiorata in the Scrambling Fraternity. I'd carefully researched the route to it and actually despite the conditions I did well. I landed at this boulder field here sort of bang on course or so I thought. So at this stage I'm still really confident I'm going to be recording a the full and polished fancy pants sort of production of me climbing the scrambling route. A Via Ferrata incidentally is a pegged out climbing path, climbing route up a mountain, up rock faces, uh, with ropes, hooks, sometimes with ladders. No one knows how old the one here is or indeed who put it there. They date back, the Via Ferratas date back to the 19th century in Italy and uh, Austria. And this one here in the eastern fells of the Lake District is really the antithesis of the over-commercialised Via Ferratas that we've seen in recent uh, decades. But I couldn't find it. It's freezing, really difficult, the weather is starting to get uh, worse time to get the uh, ice axe out there as you can see so this is about the most authentic I think that's what we call it on YouTube video I've probably ever uh, produced it's just sort of wobbly GoPro stuff there's some fancy pants okay this is the tale of a mountain scramble that has gone wrong I set off from the car this morning with the plan to find a, an historic scrambling route up to the summit of Grey Crag in the Lake District. I think there might be two of those. I'll identify down there which one this is. However, as you can see from the overlay footage, the weather is pretty bad and things have gone a little bit wrong. I seem to have picked the wrong rib. So this video is now turning into a demonstration of how an experienced scrambler gets out of trouble when they've taken a wrong turn. Join me! This is classic. From afar, the route that I'm now at the uh, foot of looked perfectly doable, but uh, now on closer inspection, I'm, uh, I'm not going up there. I think the only option is going to be to go down there, drop down a bit and see if we can get up one of these uh, gullies. I like this little countdown thing on the voiceover recorder, uh, it makes me feel professional. I ended up uh, endlessly zigzagging across the uh, rock faces here until I found uh, a route uh, to the top. I'd ridiculously left my uh, chains uh, in the car so my boots were slipping all over the shop. There was a nice moment where I did see some deer and they didn't see me. And that bit was uh, inadvertently uh, filmed in my pocket. Uh, things are getting pretty desperate. I don't mind admitting I'm getting scared now at this stage. The weather is uh, horrendous and I'm struggling. I'll uh, let you savour my terror from the safety of your own devices. Eventually I did manage to reach the top. 
the ridge was um, subject to the most phenomenal wind speeds. It was horrendous up there, and I then faced a somewhat dispiriting, slip slidey descent, wondering how on earth I was going to get any content out of this. I really do like this uh, countdown thing, it's exciting. Uh, it's a few days later now, it's my last chance to get uh, a video out uh, this week. I'm in a different location, climbing the Pike O Stickle, Pike of Stickle, in uh, Great Langdale in the Lake District. And this is where I'm going to visit the treacherous Neolithic Axe Factory, uh, up there near the summit. The weather has now turned to rain the forecast has told me it's uh, set in for 10 days so this is filmed just with a gopro and even a little bit of handheld phone no mics the axe factory was in production five to six thousand years ago think about that it's incredible isn't it um, new settlers came in from the uh, continent clearing woodland and uh, creating settlements it's interesting that back then at that time uh, the uh, area that we're looking at here on the screen was wooded it was only the very highest summits that peaked out above the dense uh, woodland I really was in debate with myself about whether to actually give up on a video this week. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you think it was uh, worth it. But this sort of footage is not really to the normal standard that I aspire to. The Neolithic Axe Factory was originally discovered in the 1930s, thoroughly investigated in the 40s and the 50s. Hundreds of axe rejects found up here. Uh, rough outs, blades and flakes. The rock type is called the Group VI, Group 6 Langdale Tuff, more commonly perhaps Greenstone or Hornstone. It may have been physically quarried out of the mountain or they were just finding it in the scree slopes. I'm uh, getting close now to the summit of the Pico Stickle. Uh, just like that Via Ferrata, I'm going to have to come back because this is not doing this beautiful location justice at all. There's the summit in the mist and the rain, and the uh, quarry itself, the axe factory, is down there. It's a pretty treacherous uh, scree slope, and uh, again, I'm feeling a bit scared as I venture my way down it. The uh, workers sheltered up here in caves, and we're going to see one of those in a moment. Some of them show signs that they were actually sort of hacked out of the rock. And they do erroneously get called the Axe Factory. There's one cave down the slope here that is called the Axe Factory. The whole thing is the uh, Axe Factory. Now, they found the greenstone here, and then they roughly shaped it using antlers and bone on site. And then it was shipped off to other places for polishing um, with water and sandstone. And there we have it, the highly sought after green stone. Now, uh, it was shipped out from here. The rough outs that they quickly made here were shipped out to other sites where they were highly polished and made to a high standard. One location is Ehenside Tarn which is out on the Cumbrian coast. And they've found that over 25%, over a quarter of the Neolithic axes found in the UK came from here, from what you're looking at on your screen right now. These uh, shots there are the lower slope. We're now uh, back up about sort of halfway down. And here we have the cave, which uh, many in the hiking and scrambling um, community actually call the axe factory. The whole thing is the axe factory. The scree that we've been looking at is the remains of a Neolithic axe production. So we're going into the cave now. There's the obligatory geocache that you can see. Now, the cave didn't really offer very much shelter. It was uh, as wet in there as it was outside. And I had a look at the geocache. And uh, as is customary on this channel, I uh, 
saw that as an opportunity for a little bit of self-promotion so if you're watching this if you've come and subscribed to the channel because you found our cards in the geocache in the axe factory cave on the pika stickle let us know in the comments down below as well as the mainland the neolithic axes have turned up in northern ireland there's been one in poland of all places good example in bridport museum and that was found in south dorset i'm a bit scared again on the location by the way in 4000 bc the population was 220,000. that's not many people why was it so important to come here this dangerous location how did they identify the remote geological fault and why was it significant to them probably rituals is what they're gonna say I know that this video has all been voiceover because of the difficult conditions, but whilst I shelter here in the Axe factory, I thought I'd end the video with a quick shout out to Paul and Headley at Wessex Ways. I'd like to thank them for their ongoing support of the channel. And um, there's quite a few questions uh, coming out of Wessex Ways about what WC21 UK Productions Limited stands for. And uh, when I appeared on the podcast, we neglected to tackle it so uh, the battery is getting a bit low on this by the way but hopefully it'll give us time to uh, run through this so the important constituent parts of wc21 uk productions limited are the wc the 21 and then specifically the uk in brackets so to tackle the wc well that stands for 